Welcome to Soul Busy. I'm Rach. And I'm Carly, your CEO and COO sisters. We share unfiltered convo on balancing hustle with mindfulness while running successful businesses with soul and and the the real life between between it all. Dr. Gerilyn Kruger offers a unique blend of acupuncture, Chinese herbal medicine, nutrition, and functional medicine at her practice in Natick. She is also a personal friend of mine and Carly's and our acupuncturist. Her lifelong passion for healing came from her own personal journey of healing from conditions that were missed by the conventional medical model, and today we are here to lay down the foundation for how to heal holistically by bridging ancient wisdom of traditional Eastern medicine with a blend of functional medicine lab testing. Before we begin this episode, we just wanted to have a quick disclaimer. We understand the sensitivity of these topics. It's crucial to note that our experiences are incredibly personal, and we do not advocate that you replicate our journeys in any way. Before considering any changes to your diet or your lifestyle, we strongly recommend consulting with a medical professional. Your well-being is our priority, and this podcast is here to inspire and inform, not prescribe. Welcome, Gerilyn. Gerilyn, Welcome. Welcome, Gerilyn. We are so glad to have you here. I'm so excited to be here. It's honestly just so funny because like our journey started in a BNI networking group at 6 a.m. in the morning at a temple. I can't believe you guys did that. Oh, not we did it together. Gerilyn and I would go every Thursday morning at 6 a.m. to BNI and we would have a referral partnership and that's how we met. It is. But now we're here. Losers. I was thinking that that was a decade ago. Was it a decade ago? You made me go to one of those. A decade ago. At like 5.30 a.m. It's not a fun time in our life. I, don't, I mean, I, I didn't love it. When but did you know. stop doing that? I don't know. Oh, probably. like a long time ago. Yeah, a while ago. I think I did it for three years. Got good business from it. But here we are. We're here, we're here at the podcast today. You can today. always tell who's in a and group on Framingham Family Network. Oh, my God. Because everyone so recommends the same people Literally. over and over again. It's a scam. All right. So, hey. We love you. I think you are one of the loveliest humans I've ever had the pleasure of talking to. And you helped me get pregnant. You are just became a doctor and you are. Was that recent? Yeah. Wow. Yep. That's awesome. I completed it. Congratulations. That's awesome. That's incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. And you've taught me personally so much about just different forms of medicine. You're almost like just. You're always a sounding board for me too. Like I remember there was a, a troubling time when I was pregnant and I had like a question about a certain, you know, vaccine and and you were really helpful to me and kind of, you never told me exactly what to do, but I remember you laid out the options for me and you were like, you make the decision, here's what I know. And I really respected your approach on that. And what I found almost troubling is that not all doctors share that approach, you know? So that I wanted to talk today about what it means to holistically heal. And I and I, the reason I'm calling this episode 101 is because even myself, when I went to dive deep into Chinese medicine on the internet, I actually at first thought I don't do Chinese medicine. And I first thought I don't do as much holistic healing as I thought. Then I read the list of what holistic healing means. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, holy shit, I, I am holistic healing. Like literally it's, I live it. Well, so, although Chinese medicine has been around forever, it's like TikTok has brought it back around a oh, little hell bit yeah. too. So I think like during COVID when everything shut down and then TikTok happened, Chinese medicine became more and more popular, especially for fertility. Absolutely. So yeah, I, I'm so glad you're here and, you know, just grateful. So thank you. Thank you for having me. I was thinking about how I did meet you about a decade ago and just how special it's been to cheer you on in your journey. Thank you. And I have always felt this kindred friendship, soul level, like the way you operate and do life and your attitude toward life has always just been kind of this amazing thing to watch. And then, you know, I meet you, Carly, and I get to see the synergy that you have as sisters. It's funny. And it's nothing short of magical to me. It is magical. It's like the two souls coming Mm -hmm. in to do this life, to do this work together is um, honestly just it's really something to be. Thank you. So Thank it's you. Thank you. Special for me to be here with you guys. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. funny. You've actually seen us in really funny situations. Like I've been, <laughs> I've been working with Gerilyn what for the past two to three months. What's Carly talking. It, yes. No one knows. Any everybody tells me that no one knows who's talking. Oh, what, is that really? Like the most common thing I hear from the no, podcast. I feel like we don't sound alike. No, no, no. I think we sound identical. 
Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, Carly but, here. <laughs> shook. <laughs> I hate all of you. Um, but just like that intimate moment in that room and like the way you are is just unbelievable. This isn't an ad for you, but highly recommend anybody needing acupuncture to go to you. I literally recommend everybody to you. I, I like send group text. Oh yeah. I'm like, hi, it's me. This is Geraldine. She's going to heal you. You're like Bye. my, you're my referral. You're like my everything referral. It's like someone's going through a bad phase of life. Someone hurt their foot. Someone has like a little stress level or they want to get pregnant. I'm like, Gerilyn, Ger- my mom too. She doesn't get acupuncture, but she's a good referral. It's hard to understand. Your mom has sent me many referrals. She's her own BNI. No, it's really, super funny. Like, it's so kind I think I was telling Gerilyn when I was getting acupuncture the other day or maybe a couple weeks ago that like when you see it in the movies- you think acupuncture is like you have like a point like everywhere on your face. Like it's like you're covered in the points. Mm -hmm. So it seems scary, but it's not once you're in there, it, it's not, you can feel it like vibrating through your body. It's, it's insane. Could you start by actually just explaining to everybody what is acupuncture? Like what's the big, make everything dumb today. Like give us the dumbest level of everything. Yeah. I, I need that too. (laughs) Yeah, well, you hit upon a a real truth that in movies and cinema, there are these depictions of acupuncture where they're covered in needles. So funny. It is funny because I'm often telling people more is not better. Mm -hmm. Like there are incredibly powerful treatments that are just a few points. Yeah. So choosing their correct point, it's a way to unlock a signal that the body is needing to heal and repair itself. But just to go back... Acupuncture uses sterile, hair-thin needles inserted into the body um, very shallowly, very gently, and it stimulates the body's innate healing capacity to heal, restore, repair. Um, And from a Western standpoint, even a scientific standpoint, it's stimulating the body's response. The body is saying, oh, there's something there. And so mechanically, the fascia is getting stimulated, the nervous system is getting stimulated, and therefore the central nervous system and all the chemicals of the brain and all kinds of mechanisms can be accessed that way. So it's wonderful. Yeah. What, uh, what's a meridian? What, What is that? So meridians, they are these predictable energetic pathways that have been found over time. This medicine is thousands of years old and they, um, pertain to all the various organ systems. So there'll be channels and pathways that have the names of organs, the liver, the kidney, the heart. Um, But more than the actual physical organ, we're also tapping into the energetics and we're tapping into the emotion of that organ too, which is why it's very mind, body, spirit. Um, And so, for example, with any of the organ systems, they are tied to emotion. So liver would be anger and frustration, and heart might be joy, but also mania, and lung would be grief. Um, Large intestine would be control, but also letting go. And of course, you can see where this ties in. That's so interesting. That's so interesting. Well, it's funny. Large intestine, intestine, stress, gut, anxiety, holding, constipation. It's it's all connected. Absolutely. I can see why there's such controversy on this, because people must hear that, not live it, breathe it, understand it and be like what mm-hmm. that doesn't even make sense yeah which is annoying because if you really think about it like all we ever knew was what doctors told us what professionals told us not that you're not a professional but like what where we were supposed to go originally yeah. my doctor actually told me yeah when I was, I was starting to get that. pregnant or no I'm not pregnant but I'm manifesting that I am um when I was trying to or starting to try to to go to acupuncture which I really loved about her Because I was like, wow, I'm so grateful that you believe in those type of holistic remedies. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think what I I find very interesting as someone who does a lot of these modalities, (sighs) I get made fun of for using those words, um, is is that I'm noticing that So we are Western medicine. No, we are Eastern medicine. I never know the difference. Yeah, so acupuncture is Mainly because I don't know the map. Acupuncture, <laughs> acupuncture is part of traditional Eastern medicine. Okay, so we're Western. Yes. So I find now that Western medicine is a hundred is not a hundred percent blocked anymore from Eastern medicine. I think that the gates are opening 
but I, I, th I think they're extremely close still, which is sad. And I think we'll talk about that later because I think it's a very important topic. And I, and I think that the one thing I'd like to say too at the start of this podcast is there is no intention here of uh, picking a Negatively side. Negatively yeah. speaking on the medicine, medical industry, yeah. nurses, nurse Agreed. practitioners, doctors, like I have the utmost respect, truthfully. Agreed. I think for me, it's all about being inquisitive and it's all about treating the individual and not the system. And I think what has happened, which is detrimental, is that we have gotten to this habit of, you know, you can, I don't think you can deny anymore big pharma exists. I don't think you can deny anymore that there's, you know, some malicious intent behind the medical industry that that, that does happen. It doesn't mean everyone's bad. It doesn't mean that everyone has bad intention, but it does mean you have to be open and you should ask these questions you should understand you have these to things. advocate for yourself definitely too, because they think about this there's so many people to take care of in this world and everybody's different so they're trying to make it a process which i get i understand yeah, that we you, love a process you, you have to but a body's not a process it's, it's not a process but i think when you duplicate and duplicate the like the amount of people on the world like it becomes hard to take care of everybody yeah that's one way to look at it and I, also i mean it's a business it's a business. It's a business. It is a so business. Sometimes I look at it as very impersonal in that sense. Mm. It's like, okay, this is a business that is structured a certain way. And so yeah. I will compare, say, East and West, which of course is such a generalization. Um, but I will compare the different approaches, but you're right. It's not about one being better or one being no, no. not as good. It's literally like, how do we best create a new paradigm of health in order to serve patients right and serve each other right right which i think is what we're emerging because when we say western medicine that can include integrative medicine and that can include functional, functional medicine. right i've needed medical interventions that are very western right right and right they have been life-changing and the 100%. people were angels right um so you know again, it all matters I just think it does all matter well, it's just it's supplemental to like some of the stuff that you do and that we've done together like i'm still working with my normal doctor yes. and still working with you. And actually we, I did blood panels with you and my normal doctor and the way you read them and the way she read them were completely different. Well, yeah, I had to beg to get a blood panel done. Beg. Which is something I hear actually a lot. To get a blood panel done. I was like, I want to know my magnesium levels. They were like, why? I was like, cause I want to know if I need magnesium. I I'm like, why do I have to fight for this? I went to my physical recently. And my physical consisted of them sitting there, touching me quickly, and then said, do you wear a seatbelt? And do you smoke weed? I was like, yeah, I, I smoke weed and I wear a seatbelt. Do you have any other questions for me? Like, yeah. I'm just like, is there any other depth here that like, we could go about, into? What do you eat? Like, right, like what do you eat? Like, what, right. just like, what are your, do you do yoga? Do you like, oh, I have back pain. Oh, here, here's a, a shot. No, start with yoga. You know, that's the frustrating part for me is like, I know that those things are, are the most beneficial, you know? Yeah. So you touch upon a good point as far as blood work and why I really got into studying it was because I wanted to understand it and I wanted to understand it from a deeper level. And also I had been asking so many of my patients, please go get a full thyroid panel. And they were coming back with just TSH, excuse me, and T4, right. maybe. And so often that's just a perfect example that's talked a lot about in functional medicine where people are diagnosed as far as their thyroid health from just minimal markers. Right. And yeah. it's just not done. And it, the reason it's often not done is that insurance doesn't pay for those markers, whether you get them done at your doctor or you get them done from a functional medicine practitioner. So it's expensive to be healthy. Yeah. It's a sad yeah, thing. It's yeah. expensive well, to be healthy. That's the it point of it all be. being <laughs> revolving. Jesus. I mean, it is. I want to. It's expensive to have a child. It, like I literally, literally, I can't even deliver your child. Believe the bill. People I don't know. People don't from know having that. a baby. I'm like, you just charged me for doing that. That I can't. So <laughs> oh, I want to back up for a second. I want to read the traditional Chinese medicine definition. It's TCM is a complex complex system based on a belief in two opposite forces. LOL, yin and yang for the mind, That's crazy for the body and the mind to be in good health. Practitioners believe that yin and yang must be in balance. I was cracking up reading this description because I knew in my head what I thought the definition was, right? I didn't know yin yang was going to be, you know, that, that's the whole theme of this podcast is the contrast of it all. So it's like, you know, yin yang is so powerful to us. 
TCM practitioners use a combination of herbal, mind, body, and physical therapies to achieve this. It is over 2,000 years old and is where practices such as acupuncture and Tai Chi have their origins. Yeah. Which I, you know, I've done Tai Chi before. I love Tai Chi. I think it's a very interesting, it's a very odd thing to do alone and you're in a room. But <laughs> I'm going to you know, watch you do that one it's day. It's very powerful. What I wanted to ask you, Jarlyn, you know, in the topic of yin yang is, you know, you're on our podcast called Soul Busy. It's all, it, it, you have to be soul busy to be on this podcast. <laughs> Why are you soul busy, you know, in, in your life? And where does the contrast come into it all for you? Yeah. Um, first of all, that name that word I'm like oh no I have a word to describe what, what you I are am. <laughs> thank you it's really <laughs> like, good you. I have a phrase to describe my yes, soul busy agreed. ways <laughs> Trademark. It's catchy for sure Trademark. yes um, I'm soul busy yeah um I think that being soul busy which I so resonate with it's placing as much emphasis on the inner landscape of awareness and energy Chills. and creativity mm as much as the outer output of the world. And I think of this quote, I don't know if I'll quote it right, but it's, um, use your no to guard your yes. Have you heard that? Um, don't yeah. clap on a podcast. <laughs> Clapping. Use I like your, that a lot. Uh, say it again. But, say it again. Yeah, so you use your no to guard your yes. And you, I love that uh, because... Oh, that's me. Yeah. That's my life. Yes. That's me too, for sure. Beautiful um, I love my no. Love you know, that. Like I if, love my now. Yeah, if we want to live on purpose and we want to have focus and we want to be as energized as can be, undoubtedly we're going to have to use no's to protect mm. that focus and that purpose. So, so funny you said that because there's a podcast that. that we were just recorded that hasn't come out yet oh. and it's all about how you have to sacrifice some yeses yeah. in order to be soul busy. It yeah. means sacrifice. It means saying no because in order... You have to replace certain activities. And you and I are so aligned in this. Like yeah. I am so rejuvenated by just walking in nature. I love your posts when you're like just showing icicles. I'm like, I love that icicle. <laughs> when I need to ground myself, I go to nature. I know you do too. I love I that icicle. I love that icicle. It's so simple. It's so real. Carly always laughs. I look at the sky. I'm like, I'm so small. I think, look at the pictures of no, the galaxy. I, I don't I'm laugh. So small. But I want to say something based on what you're saying. Sure, Carly. Yes, Please respond. I'm here, Rachel. Um, when I was on the plane going to my honeymoon, mm, I what'd was, you think? I literally was looking outside the window. There was no TVs on the um, American Airlines flights, which I actually actually enjoyed. Oh, um, she's an old yes, school girly. She is. She doesn't like the TV on the JetBlue plane. It never works. Anyways. It never works. So what's it? So it what's really the point matter. of it being so you're having there? A literally. Quiet moment. Yes. So I'm looking out the window, <laughs> literally laughing to myself that like I'm the smallest. Irrele most irrelevant person on this earth. <laughs> yeah. Isn't and, that freeing? And then you look so down. Freeing. It's so yeah. freeing, but people don't realize. I didn't always believe this, though, so I can speak to the people who, like, Rachel always, like, thought like this, and she taught me how to think like this, and I was like, wait, yeah, I'm on this plane. Everyone's down there hustling and bustling, <laughs> and I'm <laughs> doing... You can't even see them. It's, it's just not, like... You know I highly Mike recommend the next time anyone's on an airplane, though, yeah. look out the window and think about that. Mike and I talk about this a lot, this exact topic. And he said to me the other night, he goes, and he, it honestly was a good point. It's funny. He goes, who's the like emperor of China or who's the president of, of this German county? Whatever. I'm like, I can't answer. He's like, if you can't answer that then we don't matter. I'm like, that's how you're <laughs> applying this point? No, it's just like, <laughs> it's like, I'm like, yeah, I guess I don't know the, all of that information. But I'm <laughs> sitting up there like going to this destination with my husband, your husband, person I just married, <laughs> going to our honeymoon, like literally laughing that like I ever care about anything. Yeah. And it's I just know. so funny. And I, I just always wish people could feel that feeling because it's like laughable or something. I, laughable. I don't know what it is, but it is freeing. I think I that know. might be the word. I think it's like an antidote to our world too. Like talking about the nature, right? Like I, I call it nature infusions. I've said this for. I love that. That's a nice way to uh, put it. Yeah, and it's like I will just walk around with my little phone camera, and I'll just look for beauty because I feel like beauty is that portal mm. to gratitude, and that is the portal to the mm. divine. Portal to gratitude. Yeah, and that is like an antidote to the horrors of our world, right? Like we all need a way to decompress and to be like, okay. I'm just going to flex the muscle of looking for beauty mm. and just that as a practice. Yeah. Is Dropping something, lines. Honey. Something I learned yeah. from my mom <laughs> from the last podcast is just like being grateful for the little things. And like, it can be something I love about me and Rachel is like, we do things very differently. Something we love about us. I love what I love about <laughs> myself is 
we do things differently. Like she's saying, I laugh at her about the icicles, but as I grow older, like I, as I'm really, really old, as I grow I older, but those things are important. The little moments, getting a coffee and like putting the windows down and like driving to your favorite music. Like mm. we forget about those things. I don't, I don't forget about those things. I think people do though. People, like, the thing is, is like, it's a very common thing for a mom to be like, you want to go here and meet up here. I don't do that with other moms or other people because I would rather go outside rain or shine, snow or sleet or whatever it is and put my kid outside barefoot and ground her in the dirt. Well, Sadie can't walk it, which I'm not saying her. But one leg li- peg. Yeah, one leg peg. Um, That's talk- what I'm calling She's Sadie. scooting around town right she's now. Doing, she can't she's walk She's doing it. the walk. I saw a picture of this. It's a she literally scoot. looks like one leg peg. And now we've been calling her so Peggy. Cute. It's not good. Aww. It's great. But honestly. I would rather watch her in nature and watch her have amazement. And like yesterday, she look. it's funny. A toddler does this to you. It kind of brings you back. She. I walked outside with Lily. She had a meltdown because she wanted, didn't want to wear shoes. And I, my mom was trying to give her shoes. She was trying to do what was right, you know? And I said, it's fine. Let her have no shoes. I don't care. Let her walk in the cold mud. Don't care. No jacket. Don't care. You know, I know that's unconventional. Lily just walked across the, the dirty mud and then looked at the sky and goes, mama, blue sky, white clouds. And I said, yeah, Let's sit and look at it together. It's so beautiful. Kids will do that to you though. Cause I was yeah. playing with Lily in her little house, sitting in the house and she's like pretending to give me food. She's like, oh, you want food? And then she went to the side and like picked up food and she was like, here you go. It's just like their imagination and their appreciation yes, is yes. so amazing. Amazing. It makes you appreciate yeah, more Yeah, they're though. present. All right. So I want to, now I'm going to read one other thing. So what I did this morning when I was meditating and preparing for this and just, you know, thinking about what, how does this apply to my life? I'm not very much so a definition girly. Like I'm not a book. I am a book person, but I'm not, I don't like stick to the definition. I can't explain it. I know you know what I mean. Yeah. You're not a rule follower. I'm not a rule follower. I just, I'm just living authentically. I wanted to look up what types of holistic healing there were. And then I realized <laughs> I do every single one. Yeah. So I'm going to read them to our viewers. Meditation. So, so it's acupuncture, Ayurveda healing, Ayurveda killing, excuse What's that? me. Um, it's the elements of the, the universe of the world and how they run through your body and your energy. Is like that, cold is plunge? that a good ex- explanation of Ayurvedic? Is cold plunge something? Yeah, it's another ancient medicine. An ancient medicine, that, yeah. Um, from what I know, it stems from the area of India. Yes, and it, also it is India. Every bit is, every bit is ancient and um, a beautiful mo- model that actually has a lot of overlap. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, uh, just a beautiful way of seeing the world. I did Ayurvedic healing in yoga. That's how I was introduced to it. Yeah. Homeopathy, um, yoga, massage, meditation, Reiki, mm-hmm. hypnotherapy. I haven't done that one. N- naturopathy. I don't know what that is. Um, naturopathy. Mm-hmm. Uh, chiropractic. Yes. Tai Chi. Yes. Traditional Chinese medicine. Duh. Ar- aromatherapy. Every day. Biofeedback. Got to do that with you. Um, nutrition, energy therapy is exercise, mindfulness, acupressure, therapy, body manipulation, diet therapy, moxie bustion, which I know you do. Moxie bustion. You love moxie. When she lights. That's the the smoldering. I love that. Yes. Yeah. You're making my (laughs) belly all small. The smoldering mugwort. I love when she does that. (laughs) She loves a warm belly. We love moxie. We love a warm belly Mm. and we love warm joints. I need moxie also ecstasy. No, what am I thinking of? It's moxa, if you want to moxa. abbreviate Wait, it. what drug am I thinking of? No, not oxy. What is the... Molly. I'm thinking of Molly. What? <laughs> Don't take Molly. Um, that is not traditional Chinese medicine. It is and not. And then supplements, and uh, the last one was supplements, and dieting, diet therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was like the holistic healing rundown 101. That's what it yeah. means. Um, do you well, want it's a comprehensive list. Yeah, it is a list. What, what's, yeah. what is your feeling on that list? And what's your feeling on like your, again, your dumbed down version of holistic healing 101? Like what's your, your take? Yeah, as far as holistic healing, I think that the common denominator that they all have in common is they are trying to treat the body as a whole. Right. So mm-hmm. holistic. Yummy. Whole body. Um, that is the most dumbed down way to say it. And it's looking at the body as everything is interrelated interconnected 
functionally connected. And mm-hmm. so that's also the mind, the body, the spirit. And often most traditions will also tie in the laws of nature. Mm-hmm. So there's this connection to the natural law of things, um, the natural physics of things, our biology, um, the cycles of nature. There's often some element of that, especially in some of these ancient traditions. Um, that, that's a great answer. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I just want to... It's funny, and maybe this is me just not being educated on it. I would think that sometimes you're also getting to the root or the core of someone's like issue. Right. Or I feel like that sometimes like that's what we talk about. Well, that's why it, uh, it's so relevant on this podcast. Yeah. Because like a lot of the things that you just mentioned to me that like in my head, I was like, yeah. And I also think about when I go to the gym, I leave the gym, I get in my car, it's like nice out. And I'm like, oh my God, that was the, could have been the worst workout of my life. That was the best workout ever. And I just feel so good just by like moving my body. Oh, yeah. But, like, you don't realize that those are, therapy. like, medicines or therapy it's or therapy. holistic healing. Yeah. I don't I don't realize that when you're doing it. Have you seen the movie Soul? No. Oh, what? She loves the movie I, Soul. Sherilyn, I'm, I'm begging of you okay. that you go home and please watch that movie tonight. Okay, please. Yeah, I'll take that right. Like, I don't know if you smoke, but smoke a joint and then watch Soul. <laughs> I just say it's a great, great movie. Yeah, I haven't even seen that. Okay, so, it, first of all, there is this scene at the end. Yeah. You'll, know, you'll know it where... I don't want to give away too much, but there's all these little belongings that somebody has collected all over New York City that's appreciated New York City for the first time. And they show all these different scenes at the end of the movie that I think represent soul or represent purpose or represent joy. And what they flash is all these moments that are so meaningful to me. It's when light is hitting the trees in that really beautiful way and like the sunbeams are are coming through or you know, a moment of laughter or that first bite of pizza, like when you're mm. having, like, like Warm joyful foods. moments yes. is also to me what it means, you know, like it's feeding your soul. Absolutely. It, it's feeding your soul. That's it's really what it is. It's nourishment. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's like, that is exactly what feeds and what refills the battery. Yep. Um, and it is, it's those moments of beauty, moments of connection, mm-hmm. moments of actually being present. Yeah. I feel that way in the Cape a lot when we go. That's yeah. why I like yeah, the Cape. It's, it's a really pain in the freeing. ass to get there, but it's beautiful. It's freeing. Something I, I want to know that you stated before that we would circle back to is like how you got into this because you had your Agreed. own, you had your own issues that you had to heal. Yeah. Do you Could mind you sharing? Tell us a, a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so my path is so directed by my own health journeys and multiple times in my life needing to figure something out and seek deeper answers. And I'll just, I'll give you maybe three examples that just kind of quickly would outline that. And this started when I was a kid. So I was a little kid. I had asthma, allergies, ear infections, things like that. And my mom, thank goodness, was really into seeking deeper answers. And so she took me off dairy And she taught me, originally a picky eater, to eat the colors of the rainbow, food that came from the earth, whole foods that had the energy of life force. Like she literally told me this as a little kid. It appealed to my need for knowing why to do anything. Mm, Start with why. (laughs) Which was helpful. Interesting. I'm a Taurus. I mean, a little Taurus child, right? Mm -hmm. So I needed to know why. And, um, and I healed, and I healed my respiratory system to the point where by seventh grade, I was running on the, gra- on the wow. cross-country team of my high school. And so for me as a little kid, it was like, oh, food can be medicine. Food is interesting. Nutrition is interesting. The body can heal. And this was just like all the way back then. And I think that just set the stage for so much. Um, and then, you know, fast forward, I was just healthy in almost every way, but my menstrual cycle was painful and I had PMS and I was put on birth control because Mm, that's what happens. That's what you do. And in my generation, that's also like very, very popular. That's kind of what a lot of people did, but also I was doing all these natural things and exploring these natural ways, but I still went to a gynecologist. He said, well, it would be worse off of the pill. So go on the pill. And I did, but it never worked for me. <laughs> and I spent regret. It never worked for me either. Never. I spent a decade. Made me crazy. On every single trying this, trying that, trying IUDs. And eventually I found acupuncture. And I had found other things. I was into nutrition. I was into yoga. I was into all these other things. But nothing had really cracked the code. But acupuncture was mind-blowing because within three cycles, my pain went away. 
And within another few cycles, my PMS was like 80 to 90% better, wow. which was almost a bigger deal to me. The physical pain was almost terrible, but like every four weeks, not being able to make, you know, don't dump your boyfriend every four weeks kind of thing. <laughs> so that's 100% why I went back to school for acupuncture and herbal medicine and why I'm so passionate helping hormonal health. And, um, you know, so many women, especially in my generation, they just didn't know anything else could be done. And so many things can be I done. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. And what was the third? You said there were three things you had healed from. Yes. So the third, this was about 11 years ago, I moved into a home that had mold. And people generally, to simplify, have different tolerances with how they can process mold. Um, for me, it tanked my immune system. And it actually flared up a dormant state of multiple Lyme. Yeah, and I remember when that happened for you. Yeah, so I moved into this house, got really sick, and it went downhill so fast that it was absolutely alarming. It was neurological symptoms, brain fog. It was, um, I was riddled with joint pain. My hair started falling out. Yeah, that's when that's you contacted scary. me. Yep. Um, my eyes were burning. I mean, it was just like so many things all at once. And at the time, there weren't a lot of Lyme literate practitioners. So getting the proper workup and diagnosis and everything it was just like you have Lyme disease, you're saying? Right. So you at the time, I do think, you know, now that I know what I know, and I finally found through the grace of my network, honestly, I found some really great practitioners that did eventually help me. But what can happen for some people, the mold is such an issue that it drops the immune system. And then so the body's an ecosystem. I guess that would be a good thing to say. Um, we all are exposed to things like Lyme and mold and mono and all these different things. It's not uncommon that our body is just in a state of homeostasis. That's what health actually means. But if something tips the scale, then it's very common that all of a sudden everything kind of goes into a tailspin. And I hate that. Scares me. Well, yeah. there's so many things that can tip the scale. Right. Right? Like right. it could be a breakup. Right. It could be Stress. mold. Yes. It could be so many things that yes. tip the scale for you. Yes. But I think you have to know when your scale is tipped. Yeah. Oh, too. Yeah. That's the other thing. You know what I mean? When Absolutely. you're off balance and that's that's the presence, that's the clarity, that's the quiet, that's understanding. That's the challenging first step, I think, in holistic healing is do you hear I know. Do you hear the symptom? Because the symptoms, and I think that's another thread in holistic healing, right? Like we pay attention to symptoms and we know that the symptoms are the language of the body. And it's important to say also, like it is, and I've had my health struggles and I still is my 110% belief that the body does not attack itself. There is not, right. there can be autoimmune presentations because the body gets hijacked and there are neurotoxic influences, right? Like mold can be very neurotoxic, um, certain viral, bacterial, et cetera. But, um, you know, to know that the body's always on our side and all symptoms are basically trying to point us to the solution. Um, so I, yeah, it's, that was a you have whirlwind to pay attention. of learning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you, you, you feel healed now. Yeah. And, and I know my body so much better. And, um, it was something I didn't talk about for a very long time because I didn't want to be seen in a certain way. Right. Um, and then I realized, well, it's probably the most important thing to talk about because you can go to a decade of school, you can read all the books, but lived experience and like the alchemy of that and being able to really understand through my own real-time mentorship um, with multiple top practitioners in the field and to see the approach of, well, how do you cool down a cascade of autoimmune in real time? How do you do it? What are the stages of operations? And to really get a grasp on that and to kind of like meld together the different approaches really ignited my passion for um, these practitioners that could not only know the herbal medicine, know some of the holistic healing, but then also be really savvy when it came to blood work and came to biomarkers right. and like knew what to look for on some of these more complex conditions. Do you have success stories of some of your patients? Yeah. That like a couple that you can share that so people can understand like, like shocking ones. Obviously no names, but just no just tell us their names. <laughs> expose them. Yeah. Let me think about that. Sorry. I just thought about it while you were talking. I thought it would be cool to know. Or even like another way to ask that is like six surprising things you see when treating people, you know, that like 
you you want people to understand because from your perspective you see people all day right so you see common denominators you see factors it must be very interesting to collect that information yeah, yeah. Um, i know fertility is big yeah so fertility is a big area women's health um all the way up to um, menopause and any period issues really because it's a window into our health and to really see that as a beautiful thing um so as an acupuncturist if you get an acupuncturist intake, you will be asked everything about your menstrual cycle, right? Um, the details. Every single What's your detail. well, flow? Yeah. When does it start? How PMS. long does it flow? I How didn't know you hurt? weren't supposed to have PMS. That was like a, an abnormality of I someone's know. period. I didn't know that when know. you taught me that. Is PM, you, you're saying that in the sense of like how Anger. you act or how you yeah. feel? Well, both. So when you think about the, the uterine lining, has to thicken and then it is released. And so along that pathway, to put it very simply, if there's stagnation along that pathway, that's where we get symptoms. And that's where people get that stagnant time right before their period where they might feel emotional turmoil, they might get migraines, they might have skin flare-ups, they might have constipation. Um, so you're saying that's a sign? Yeah. It's so a that's sign a that sign something's of, not moving as not well as it could. Right. It's Got not it. smooth. The hormonal cascade isn't smooth. The energetics, not smooth. So, so in light of the question of success stories or yeah. common denominators, your answer is fertility. You're, you're saying you've seen a lot of success stories in getting people pregnant or yeah. healing their periods. Yeah. So this ties in probably also to something I see a lot. I see a lot of lazy medicine. So people that are given, um, say, they're told they have unexplained infertility. And I know it's such a sensitive topic. Um but sometimes I see that uh, people just haven't dug deep enough into the why and the root cause of it. And um, so often something can actually be done. And so those are really rewarding cases because you're bringing life into the world. And it's just, it's incredible. And walking with mamas during that journey is so special. And, um, you know, nothing is more mind, body, spirit than creating a human. Oh my God, it is right? revolutionary. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, so. I remember when you were helping me get pregnant, I, um, it took me a little bit of time. I was really off on understanding my cycle length, which yeah. I only learned from having a monitored cycle that when I actually ovulate, which was very interesting. So that was a helpful thing that medicine could tell me, you know, that I needed to know that, I'm, you know, you're having sex on the wrong day. That's a, that's a helpful thing. Yeah. Um, one thing I found very interesting though, when I was on your table during that time is I think there was a time I was having a chemical pregnancy and you felt a difference in my pulse mm -hmm. and you knew you were like, Oh, I can tell if you're pregnant or not from your pulse. And you just shut your eyes and you touched my wrist and you were like, I, I think there's something there. And then I proceeded to have a chemical pregnancy. But what was very interesting is that you could feel that from my pulse. You shook my shook me to my core when you told me that. Cause I was like, I, how the hell can you feel that? You're like, Oh, well it's like, it gives a double, a double beat or something, I think you said. There's something that does change in the pulse. Right. And so I don't think we've talked about this, but as an acupuncturist, we feel the pulse. We feel three different positions, three different depths. It's like tuning an instrument. Yeah. And so it's a way of tapping into the energies of the body. And it is true when there's conception and pregnancy, the pulse starts to fill and be fuller in a certain way. And it starts to kind of roll um, and again, roll, that's the term you yeah, use, the, the pulse it rolls. It has a different feeling if you feel enough of them. Um, yeah. I want to so. talk about a phrase you used before, and that is lazy medicine. Yeah. Again, we're not shitting on the industry, but I do want to talk, talk about this topic because yeah. I do agree. Lazy medicine is very prominent and very lazy. And that's like a huge thing for like people with PCOS. Like that's, it's like taking over the world where people... Girls are scared, overweight girls, I can speak to this. They go to the doctor, they're like, lose weight. You're like, I'm missing my periods, like those type of things, all those symptoms of PCOS. And they say, lose weight. And like, that's the only way that you can heal your PCOS. That, it's very frustrating. It, I know. It's very frustrating. I do believe extra weight probably is causing some of those issues for me, for anybody. But so for some people, that's there's skinny people that have PCOS right. that have similar symptoms to absolutely. people who are bigger. Right. Absolutely, and they're telling them the same thing: work out less, lose weight. 
the issue, take this. I see it's, with it is it's, the you're lack not getting, of unfolding. You're not, you're not getting to the core of right. what it actually is. You're not. There's no inquisitive it's nature true. of unfolding the onion, unpeeling the onion of what's at the core. And I, I, I lose respect frankly, for that. And, and I'm just going to say this and no one needs to respond as I can hold, you know, my own responsibility. But when I was pregnant and the COVID vaccine had just come out and it was out for a week and they had only tested 13 people as a test for what would happen to a pregnant woman, I felt very cornered by the medical system in the way that they answered me on my questions. And I, I felt so sad because I felt like everyone's looking at me politically on these questions I had. And I was like, this is not a political question. I'm not asking you politically. I'm not, I don't have an agenda. I'm, I'm worried what's about it do to my, child? my baby. Yeah. I'm like, can you tell me what this could do to my baby? Can you tell me what it, it, can you confirm there's no risk? Can you confirm the risk versus the, what's the, what is that? Uh, risk reward of me taking this vaccine 10 days after it came out when no one knows the answers to my questions, I'm questioning it. And yeah. I have a right to question it. And that bothered me. And it is, was a turn for me in the medical system, sadly. And I, you know, I was very careful about that because I, I asked all my friends who were doctors. I asked every single person. I asked, you know, I had a long talk with you. I, I wanted to know what people thought. I don't think there thought. is an answer to your question. I think that's the problem. Is I think, oh, there were answers to my question. Well, I think that there's pe things people know and things people don't. And then things people... Pe things pe people are told that they need to tell you. And it's I a think blind it's, belief. it's it, like we said, it's, it's a business for everybody. Doctors go up and go to work and then they come home and watch love is blind. Just like I do. Right. Like it, it's just, it's, it's funny. You don't think about that. Like, and I've never noticed that until I watched Mammy have heart surgery. And I'm like, Oh my God, this like man's going to give my grandma heart surgery. Right. And like, and that's he's the thing. just like a normal person. I respect you that know? man so much who took the time to learn how to operate on a heart. You know, it's more the moments in the room when it's like inception of problem and then solution. And what happens in the middle there for me as a spiritual person who believes in traditional Chinese medicine, uh, it's, you know, what, why is there no in between? It's and very frustrating for to me, me. Like, I don't know yeah. about you. I never liked even taking Advil. Like I was like, I'm not, Joe's like this. He's like, what, what, you have a headache, take Advil. I'm like, I don't, I feel that now. I, I didn't don't think it before. I don't think I need to take, I just never liked taking pills. First of all, I never knew how to swallow them. I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't dad remember. used to make, make us do it with M&Ms. And I'm like, I just want to chew the M&M. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Come on. What's your feeling on, in the response to that? Yeah, uh, totally. Well, I just, I, my heart breaks at how many people were just put in really hard positions. And then I also do think kind of to what you said, everybody was operating on the knowledge that they had at the time. Right, exactly, and, exactly. And I think it's 100% okay to ask questions. Right, and it was not okay in that scenario. should not be ever politicized. Right. So, and, and curiosity and weighing pros and cons of any medical intervention is important always. Right. Like, that's just such a principle of of medicine so yeah that's that's I exactly just, what i said i feel you about that yeah. that whole what a hard position it was to a be tough position in. i mean i know we talked oh yeah we talked you helped me a lot and oh, yeah. you helped me with my decision and you know that's my own personal decision i'm not going to say that here oh. but i i agree with you i i hold i hold no malice because i think people only knew what they knew I know. but i what i really hold near and dear to my heart in a very sad way is the way I was treated for having questions by my gynecological, you know, entire practice. Some people were big word. Gynecol my you killed it. gynecologist. Gynecological. My, I don't know. I, I thank you. I probably was the wrong way to say it, but no, you know, we're going to run it right. with it. Gynecological it right. practice. Yeah. My gyne my gynecologist, my vagina doctor. Um, no, I love my practice and I respect them, but there was one particular doctor and they know this cause I complained about it who, I honestly think held a grudge against me for the way that I handled that situation and the questions I asked. And that, to me, the whole point of medicine and being intelligent and being well-versed on a topic, any topic, is how many questions you ask and how much research you do. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I was like, why is it a problem that I have a question and that I am questioning this situation? That means to me something is wrong with this system. And that leads me to my next question is your feelings on the system, you know, yeah. being in that world. Yeah, absolutely. I, one 
thing to say first, just about what you're saying. I heard this on a podcast, and I wish I could think of which one, but they were talking about the sheer glee that an astrophysicist has when they realize they're wrong. They're that curious. Exactly, exactly. Right? Perfect like response. The idea of science and inquisitiveness and always knowing that, like, we don't know what we don't know. Always. Well, that's right? a way of life you're talking about. Yeah. The, it, the glee. They use the word glee, and I was like, oh, such a good word because it, what if in medicine we bring back that sense of curiosity? Like, I know I have it, but let's, let's like, put that everywhere, right? In all practices, in yeah. all lines of work. Like, we need to realize, like, with humility what we don't know and also yeah. be eternally curious because medicine is a moving thing. It is a thing that is evolving over time. It is... It's alive. Alive, literally alive, right? And so... That, yeah. That's, that's how just, I feel about business, the way you just described it. Yeah. As a leader, sure. I pride myself in my ability to, you know, sometimes I have an ego because sometimes I think I know the answer, but I, I love the glee of thinking I, I was wrong yeah. because to me it meant I learned something. I and if I stop learning something, I'm a dead leader. I but know. if I continue to learn, if I continue to evolve, if I continue to pivot, if I continue to grow and change, I'm strong. I know. But I that requires about, no ego. Yeah, but it's also all right? about same shit, every or, different day perspective. Or to right. check yourself, yeah. right? Check to yourself. To be able to check yourself. Exactly. Yeah, so just to circle back to about what you were saying from a patient's perspective, I too went through my own ringer with that as a practitioner. Right. Um, so much pressure and opinions and... Um, intensity. Intensity. So much intensity. And that was a hard, very stressful time. It was. Because I'm still operating on everything that I know. I do have questions. I do have gut instincts. I'm trying to navigate that. Um, but I, I had judgment come my way from people I did not even expect. Uh, yeah, it was like a challenging time. Did not expect. And so it was a really interesting time in that sense. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's almost it was a sad time in, in a way yeah. it, it, you it changed everything, you know, I'm glad for the vision I gained from that moment because um, now I'm just an inquisitive little person when it comes to everything with my health, you know, everything. Um, well, yeah, but you learn that as you get older, because when you go to a doctor's office, you're like listening to whatever they're saying, not that they're right or wrong, but like I'm 30 trying to get pregnant and I was talking to my doctor and I was like, well, what about this? What do you think about this? What do you, have you heard about this? Have you tried this? Like you have to have a conversation with your doctor and not be scared of them. Yeah. And if you are, then maybe you should switch your doctor. Like I've switched my doctors before. Oh, yeah, I, I've switched. I happen to love mine so, 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 so much. I love her so much. She's the best ever right now, but she treats me like I'm her friend. Well, yeah. Like, like she's yeah. like, I'm going to do whatever I can for you. Like we're going to get this done. Like this is what's going to happen. And I've been to doctors who are like, you're overweight. Do you want Ozempic? I'm like, stop saying that to me. Like that, that's not a cure for me. Like, yeah. and it, you know what I mean? Like, it's just because you were just dropped off an Ozempic pen and, like, and given, and like, no take, shame, taken out to dinner no for a No shame to that. No shame to that at all. Mad respect. Eh, there's a little shame to big No, it's karma. not. It's respect for people who want to do it. They love it. It makes no, them I'm feel better. No, I'm not saying shame to oh. Ozempic. I'm saying shame to going straight to the prescription. Do you want Ozempic? And I called you right after that. And I was like, I don't think I would ever do that. I'm and too I scared said, of it. don't you dare. And I feel like some people just take it and they're like, it's the easy way out. And I didn't want that route, you know? It depends on the person. It's all good if you take it. It's just, I don't respect the medical practice of going straight to the script. I, it's, I don't, you know, and listen, I love a little Xanax. I love a little script. I love a little moment. I'm not saying don't take drugs. It's all good. But I, I you know, you should have it's some, all again, good. it's all good. Take some drugs. <laughs> no, you should be inquisitive. And, and, you know, that's functional medicine is yeah. something I looked into when I was, becoming a mom because I wanted a pediatrician and I experienced sadly when I became a mom I didn't know I just went to a pediatrician that I somebody recommended to me and I was extremely pressured again and and you know I, I just had questions and they I had questions about the vaccine schedule I, just, I wasn't going against it I just had a question and my question was met with if you are going to change any part of our vaccine schedule you are not welcome in this practice and I was shook. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, all right, well, I literally just asked you the most innocent question ever. 
thank you for your reply. I'm going to leave now. Yeah, and well, people are annoying though because we got all of those Gardasil when we were younger and we were told to get all of those things and now coming out now, it causes cancer. It, it causes these things. It's just like, how, how, and there's yeah. some things that don't and some things that do. And I know that's a controversial statement, but I'm cool with it. The truth is, is that that's, that happens. We were younger. Yeah. We were told to get things. And now I'm like, blindly, if you had this at this age, you could be liable for a lawsuit. A class action, and I'm class like, action lawsuit. The, true or not, it, yeah. like it happens. It yeah. just does. So something wild to say about that, that just comes to mind is that, so with medicine in general, on average, it takes 20 years for new discovery to make its way into the fold. Thank you so much for saying that. And that is... See, that's scary. A big deal. And that's why, like what you were talking about, I was going to interject for a minute because I was like, even when I had Lyme, I found a primary care physician who's still my primary care, who's incredible. Yeah. She's incredible because she knew that she wanted to be curious. And I'm she going was to her. so into bringing in the integration of the Lyme practitioner, of the functional medicine, of the, the herbalist, like all the other people that I had kind of collected. And she was like, this is great. I'm on board with this because I want to learn. I want to help people, right? So that's the thing. It's really right. like case by case and person by person. Right. And um, that's why it's not like an us and them. And, you know, it's, no, it's, it's not. just, it And does. I also feel for them. It's probably hard to treat patients and pretend like they're your family all day long. I respect that job and I think it's hard. Yeah, it is. It's a hard job and honestly. I know. I, I do, but still, I, I, you, that's why I just feel strongly about advocating for yourself. Yeah. I think that's the takeaway. Like it really should be okay to ask questions. Well, so I looked into functional medicine for the girls and I looked, I found a pediatrician. They obviously didn't take insurance. And so that, you know, that was challenging. And, you know, Mike and I got into like, not a tiff about it, but he was like, I, you know, he is not as versed in, in these things. And I'm like blood panels and, you know, they wouldn't do the vaccines at this place, which was also a challenge because we need those too. So I'm like, you know, I fall somewhere in the middle of it all. And when you fall somewhere in the middle of it all, it's not a good place to fall. It's hard. Right? Yeah. Cause yeah. But like, don't we want to be able to like be comfy in the yeah, middle right. right there. I'm always where in the like middle. we're like a little yeah. of this and a little of that and we can change our mind and we can yeah. pivot and we can just do what feels right at the time. Well, you know, yeah. ironically, speaking to the state of the world, I think that's what's wrong with the world right now. Yeah. And, and you know, there is contrast. There is black and white. There is feminine and masculine. There is yin and yang. But then there is the middle. And the middle is also a beautiful place. You know, politically, I fall in the middle. I, I just don't no have... Likes, people think that's an excuse. I, I agree. But people think that that's not, you have to pick a side. Yeah, and well, that's people the problem. are dumb. And that's you where know, peace doesn't come. No, well, the thing is this, if you- People are dumb. No, there's, the thing is, is there's war, <laughs> right? Like there's a war happening right now. I see every side in exactly what is going on and I feel sad for everyone. Everyone. And that's not allowed. You know, like that's not allowed politically. It's not allowed emotionally. It's not allowed in medicine why? And that's something I, I hope somebody takes away from this podcast is why is it not okay to be in the middle? Why is it Maybe okay? It's ego. It, it, it's, it could be ego. It could be the way you were raised. It could be what you know or what you don't know. I don't know. Fear. It's it, almost like making an other makes a person feel safe. Yeah. Right? I agree There's with like that. There's like safety and kind of being like, I'm this way. I don't change my mind. I am in this tribe, right? You know, it, it's just kind of I think that's a human nature kind of thing. Yeah. And um, safety, safety, a safety thing, yeah. picking a side, having a community that agrees with you maybe. Yeah. And then that gives you confidence yeah. potentially. Yeah. It's just like, I just think that everybody's right and everybody's wrong all the time. You know, that's how I feel. I'm just like, there's no right or wrong. It's well, just like, everyone's there just is. Up. There just is. Well, that's, there, that's, yeah. I circle back to being on the plane, looking down being like, what the hell is this world? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, it's, it's so funny. But something you said previous <laughs> that I want to talk about is I think no. when insurance doesn't cover, like there's places, obviously insurance doesn't cover for you for acupuncture. I think people think it's expensive. So I think for me, I see the value in it, but other people, I think they probably get scared. And they don't want to invest money into it, unfortunately. Well, but yeah, I, I think guess that's a mistake. Let's talk about like, let's talk about what, let's say this topic's new to you and you're listening to this podcast. You know, you're a doctor, you're an acupuncturist. You could go to you. That's one option. What about like the person who just wants to kind of like dip their toe? Where do they start? What do they do? Give us advice. 
Yeah, so I think this is such an important topic because insurance is so tricky. It's almost like a business that's behind the times. It's just not very patient-centered. And so it is very difficult to get certain biomarkers covered. Um, and it is the kind of thing where um, people end up paying out of pocket to get the deeper dive, to s get a practitioner that will spend more time analyzing. Um, is money the only way? Well, money is the only way. I mean, when it comes to acupuncture, there's community acupuncture. So that's a great solution. You are treated in a group space. That's a great thing to say. Thank right. you. So that's something really helpful. Like and they, I, they put the needles in you? Yeah, it's oh. in a group space. Oh. I refer oh. out to some practitioners that do that all over right. Boston all the time. Because people do come to me and they say, you know, I need to work on such and such. I know as a practitioner, that's more than one magical treatment. They need some regularity. And so I will say, well, why don't you go to this option? So that's one thing that I think is, is wonderful to talk about and very helpful and a perfect solution to what we need in this world. Um, when it comes to blood work, sometimes people can get some of their biomarkers from their PCP, and then some of them they will end up paying out of pocket with a functional medicine practitioner. Blood work's expensive no matter what. It is, and often, you know, probably cheaper to get it with a functional medicine practitioner that's doing it specifically through that kind of lab than the paying out of pocket portion from the medical system, actually. It's it's kind of strange, but- Are you functional I've medicine? Learned, yeah, You're so a functional medicine a doctor. Functional medicine practitioner doing the blood work panels, yeah. which I don't know if we talked about, but- I did a blood work panel with her. It was great. Well, yeah. so we're, we're going to do yeah. that. I just am, haven't signed up yet, but I want to do that next. So yeah. basically you'll have me take, tell me what that process will look like. Yeah. It's so awesome, actually. It's really cool. It it's is. like being a detective. Um, no, but the process the, is super easy. Yeah. You, she has like a whole setup. She- she tells this company like exactly what she wants to see. You go to this place that's like easily accessible from your house. Like there's a bunch around Massachusetts and you go to the one that's closest to you. They take your blood. It takes two seconds and then the results go straight to her. Right. And then she takes a, about like what, like a week and like deep dives into, <laughs> into yeah. like I was deep diving by myself, like a psychopath. And then she deep dove and I was like, Oh my God. Okay, what do you find? I'm going to listen to whatever you say. She just like looked well, at my vitamin D. Like there was like things that I never knew about before. My vitamin D was low. I didn't know about that. Yeah, you need I nature. Wouldn't, I need some vitamin D. <laughs> so wait, um, yeah, not to talk about your case at all, but like you just can. to talk about it's it in fine. general. Um, the difference, you know, you, you might go and get your yearly checkup. It might be 15 biomarkers, right? And you go to someone that's a functional medicine practitioner and it's over 80. It might be 100. It might be it another was a lot. gut yeah. test. It might be a hormone and organic acids panel. Like it, it All really from your blood. It depends. Sometimes it's multiple. It might be um, even urine. It might be um, uh, a stool sample. And it does depend. And I think what you want to do is you want to find a practitioner that can actually say, what the priorities are right. because actually speaking of the middle way in medicine i don't like the way a lot of functional medicine over tests they over test right they might spend thousands and thousands of dollars on tests when someone really only needs maybe nine hundred dollars well that's a business too yeah sure it's yes yeah, so you have to be Every, present to know what you're you dealing to with no like there's like the middle way in medicine that's what i really always aspire to because it's like you can see kind of the shadow that happens in any direction um, but just to go back to the blood panel, I am certified in functional blood chemistry. And so the difference wow. is... what a flex. <laughs> it's cool. It sounds good. It does sound so, good. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing is the thing. And what is so different that I think is really important just to tell mm -hmm. everybody, when our society in the last especially 50 years has gotten more sick and inflamed and um, more Definitely chronic inflamed. illness... The lab ranges have widened, right? So you might get a panel and things aren't flagged because the ranges are so, so wide. I was wide. just going to say that because when you look on patient gateway, you can see, oh, this is normal. But then you read things into it being like, yeah, but you're still on the lower side yeah. or you're wow, still on the higher so side. so interesting. I hope everyone just digested what you, you just know, said. You know, on patient yeah. gateway when it doesn't turn red or something. Most of them didn't. Yeah, and well, I think that the point is almost also about research yeah. in, in data and reports and this, this you know, uh, 
organization says this. Exactly. And some of it's AI now, right? If it's not flagged out of range by a computer, you carry on looking at it really quickly because they only have 15 minutes. People do carry on. Right. And so that's that's one piece of it. It's that the ranges are so wide versus a functional medicine practitioner looks at what are called optimal ranges. So what should the ranges be for optimum health? And they have to know, I mean, the reason it takes so long to study this is not all ranges mean the same thing. Like you might be a little off on one range, but it really matters. And you might be a little off on another range. It doesn't really matter because you look for the seesaw interactions of all these other biomarkers. Right. And, you know, when you're looking at 15 biomarkers, maybe you can't see that much, but when you're looking upwards of 80 or 90, you can see a lot. Right. You see a full thyroid panel and some Looking under the hood. It, yeah. Like really looking. Absolutely. You're like, what is your blood telling me? Yeah. What is your body telling me? It's a snapshot in time. Right. You know? Which that's everyone's worst nightmare because like getting your blood taken and then like waiting for the results, that's the worst thing. I hate that. It's, it, I'm it's so not, excited to do it. It's, I, yeah. I don't have a particular health concern that I'm doing it for, which I think is why I have had lack of motivation to move forward. That you know what sense. I mean? Of course. But I do, I'm very You're interested. Doing good. In, I'm good. I'm good. I'm healthy. I'm yeah, doing great. We, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy. Oh, yeah, don't clap on a podcast. Yeah. You, it's okay. You can <laughs> clap did. on the podcast. But I, I think I, what I find interesting is preventative yeah. health. And I think it's interesting to have information, like I said, yeah. and just be inquisitive. So I'd love to know, you know, what my levels are. I know. And if we can find, so with preventative medicine, if we can catch something early, it's so much easier to treat. Oh, hell yeah. It's, it's not a problem. It's so much easier to treat. I remember in my doctorate, there was a, another whole course just in there about blood chemistry. And one of the professors was so articulate where he's like, the more people that can understand this, even in Chinese medicine, acupuncturists, et cetera, the more people that just understand it, whether they're offering it and it's a specialty or not, we can catch things that might otherwise get missed and all of society wins from that that is the question that i think i have is why is it that western we're western why is it that western medicine wouldn't if you were excited and gleeful about what you didn't know if if you have this incredible tool right which is this really powerful 2024 technological medical practice why would you not want to layer the functional medicine on top of it to help that many more, that much more people? I think people? they do now. I think people do. I think it's just money, though. Not everybody does it. Not every. It's the system. The system is not it, set it's, up for it's it. It's money, though. The answer to your question is not everybody has money for both. I think it's the system, sadly. Well, yes, you're right. But it, what it, I'm saying is also true in regards to if the system was set up insurance-wise, yeah. if all of these things were available, then I think maybe it might be easier for them to accept, yes, we can do that. But I think they have to be black or white. Some because people do take insurance, though. It just depends who they are. Yeah, there's and a like lot of ways. Like who you want to go to and who's in there, a specialty. There's a lot of ways to do it. And I think that's just it. It's like sometimes people are sort of bound just in medicine about what insurance will and won't cover. Um, they might be de bound by their time constraints. They might be bound by their ability to take continuing education. Right. There's a lot of reasons um, that there's going to be variability yeah. in what's offered. But I do think, I think we're kind of like in this wave right now where people are realizing that they aren't necessarily getting to the root cause of their... Right. Um, Anything. <laughs> yeah. No, I Anything you are dealing with. Yeah, they're just not, not necessarily getting answers. And I think it's going to probably be, like most, most changes are kind of motivated by people, right? The people that are wanting a mass of people change, yeah. you know, versus like top down, which is kind of already working. I mean, I don't think, I don't think the insurance system is going to be like, okay, at the bit, to we make are a now whole lot right. of changes. And that's, what's hard. You know, they'll only pay for certain diagnostic codes or they'll only pay. It becomes a real headache. Yeah. Um, they and don't then you pay sort for of give the up. time. They don't pay for, they don't pay for anything natural like herbs and supplements, right? Versus a pharmaceutical that has known side effects right. is very, very cheap, right? Through insurance. So there's just a lot of things that are a head scratch, but I do think that shining a light on them, you know, It'll change. I think it'll change. I agree. There's a, a collective awakening happening. Yeah. I feel it. I know what's happening. I know the world is moving to a different dimension. It's just slow as shit, but we're here. It's coming. What What is your message, you know, like in your, your purpose? I feel like you really live inside your highest self, your highest purpose. What is your message in, in everything you do? Gosh, 
Thank you. I try. You do. <laughs> I try. Um, I think it comes back to that whole theme we were talking about as the inner world, right? Mm. Sort of the be in the world, but not of it. And um, also just have as much effect. Oh, I gotta start You're a over. witness. You're a witness. <laughs> Cut. What do I, that's a hard one. What do You're, I want to say? No, I, I actually am not cutting it. And I love what you just said. No, you, you are. No, I'm not. You're, look at me. You are, as you and I both love to listen to Ram Dass. Oh, and well, yeah. the entire podcast, you, what you just described to me in the inner world is you are a witness. Yeah. You're just a really smart witness. Yeah. That's really what it comes down to. I think there is an element of um, also participating in the human journey at such a deep level. Like with my work, it's like I am honored to walk with people during really potent chapters of their life. And so there's that. Um, it's just the depth of that and the depth of that then changes me. And I'm always, always, always learning. Always evolving. Always. Yeah. Always, as we, you know, we have to, right? Like, yeah. I don't know why else we're here on Earth School. Right. Earth School. <laughs> love that. Earth, Earth School. Earth, Earth that, you are going to love the movie Soul. I am yeah. so excited. You're going to text me tonight. Carly, do you have any more questions? No. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, I really loved you. this conversation. And I'll see you on Monday. Um, in case anybody would like to follow Gerilyn on Instagram or TikTok or anywhere, her handle is at Dr. Gerilyn. G-E-R-A-L-Y-N Kruger, K-R-U-G-E-R. And I invite you to DM her, talk to her, book an appointment. I'm sure that you're more than willing to continue these conversations inside of the room privately. And, you know, there's a whole slew of things that you can treat and be a resource to. My favorite part about you is you have no ego. My other favorite part about you is your energy is contagious. You're living in the fifth dimension constantly. You're an, an inquisitive, beautiful human who I think people are lucky to know and be treated by. I really mean that. And I, I think that- But you're so smart. So smart. So smart. So smart. You and, really get it. And you guys. No, no. I think this is probably just the start Aww. for you. So sweet. Too, you. in terms of like you sharing your message. And I think it's, it's going to be a beautiful journey. So you guys, you heard it first on Soul Busy, Geraldine Kruger. <laughs> Thank you so much for being Kruger. here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being here. We love you. Thank Namaste. You. Rock on. Thank you.